Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Ishai Shaghi. I'm a SharePoint expert uh, from, uh, uh, from Canberra, Australia. And uh, today I'd like to talk to you about easily creating dynamic forms in SharePoint Online from scratch. Uh, a bit about me, I've been a SharePoint expert uh, since uh, early 2001 when SharePoint was just in beta and have grown through it. I've written several books that are available on Amazon and other book uh, providers. And, <coughs> and I've been uh, um, developing SharePoint solutions. I've been uh, consulting clients. I've been uh, uh, doing information. Uh, oh, uh, Cash says uh, he can't hear me. Is anyone health, uh, else ha has uh, having any issues uh, hearing me? Okay, let's uh, see if we can, uh, let's see if uh, I see Honey and Satinder are okay, but Cash has an, uh, has an issue. Uh, Cash, can you please, well, you won't, if you can't hear me, then there's no point of uh, <coughs> me telling you. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to continue. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the person with the issue will uh, will fix it in, uh, on his end. Um, okay, so how to easily create uh, dynamic forms in SharePoint Online? I was introducing myself. I've been an expert. Uh, you can hear other things at your end. Well, what does that mean? Hopefully Cash will uh, figure it out. Um, so as I said, I've uh, been an expert for, for years, wrote several books, uh, spoke in, uh, in many conferences, and uh, I know SharePoint inside out. Uh, and today I want to, uh, to talk to you about the common problem that a lot of my clients uh, are experiencing and how to solve them uh, using a particular product sold by, uh, by a company called Quizcom. Uh, Quizcom themselves are a company based in Canada and uh, founded in 2005 and they have more than 70 uh, SharePoint add-ons and apps and uh, clients worldwide. Their website is www.quizcom.com and they have lots of products that help, uh, uh, help SharePoint uh, users to uh, improve their SharePoint environment. Now, what we're going to talk about today is user, uh, users' frustration with out-of-box forms, the features of Quizcom forms, and I'm going to do a demo. Now, I'm going to start by, uh, by introducing to you the, uh, the frustrations. <coughs> You'll have to excuse my cough. I, mean, I was sick about two weeks ago, and uh, this cough just won't go away. Um, so basically, what I, uh, what I want to, to tell you is a, a scenario that may sound very familiar to many of you. This is something that I, I, I've seen a lot of clients uh, uh, deal with. Uh, at, at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm dealing, uh, my, I have a, a massive client, one of the biggest uh, government agencies in Australia, uh, and they have uh, uh, thousands of uh, employees and they're dealing with many, many complex uh, projects and, and multi-million dollar uh, uh, projects and, um, and they're very, very complex and reporting on the project pro progress is very, uh, very complex. Uh, there's so, uh, uh, so many people involved who have to travel be uh, between cities and with all due respect to the, um, uh, to the, um, uh, uh, the application that they buy off the shelf to manage their, uh, their systems, the, uh, those applications never give them a full uh, solution for all the requirements they need. For example, you may buy a, a SAP to, uh, to do your, your finances, but you still need within Teams uh, some, uh, some small application that manages, hey, I want to travel, I need to travel from uh, Melbourne to Sydney on, uh, on that date and I need a hotel and I need some uh, expenses paid and, uh, and so on. And the big systems don't, uh, don't do that. Uh, 
So usually those clients turn to SharePoint as, uh, as their uh, basically a, a very quick way. Basically, it's an alternative to Microsoft Access, what we used to do with Microsoft Access. Now we do it in SharePoint. We build an app very quickly, uh, very easily. We add some columns, and while our users have a way to say, I'm traveling on those dates, he, uh, here's my ex uh, expenses. But the out-of-the-box forms that SharePoint uh, uh, gives us are very, very limited. And uh, users get very frustrated with, uh, with their abilities, and then they get stuck. Uh, it's uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Power Apps uh, came came in very late to the game. They came uh, uh, lately, essentially, and they're trying to plug the the gaps. But we're we're going to see uh, we're going to see basically uh, some uh, some things that some of them Power Apps uh, uh, do uh, do. But I'm going to show you how using the Quizcom uh, application, the Quizcom Forms application, we can we can do things that uh, uh, use basically enhance the out-of-the-box uh, SharePoint uh, list experience and make it a much better tool um, uh, that aligns, uh, th that competes with the likes of InfoPath, for example, from uh, Microsoft. And it, the unique thing about it is that it uses SharePoint native lists and, uh, and basically uh, extends them beyond what they could, uh, could originally do. So while Microsoft is still looking for uh, for their next form technology, and they're still uh, arguing uh, internally which form technology uh, users should use, and they told us stop using InfoPath, and uh, and Power Apps uh, is not uh, not necessarily the uh, um, uh, the, f the future. So until we have a, a, a form technology for Microsoft that actually is supported long, uh, long term. This is a, uh, the quiz conforms is a very powerful way to, uh, and to also empower uh, power users instead of, uh, uh, instead of developers. So, and I will show you, uh, show you today how easy it is for power user, not a developer, not, uh, not someone with a, a lot of experience to configure a, a very complex form. Um, so the problems, the frustrations that we have with out of box lists in uh, in SharePoint. By the way, I, I didn't know that uh, I didn't um, uh, say uh, before when I had the questions about Power Apps. Uh, Power Apps are only available on Office 365, and I'm going to show you today the demo and everything is going to be on uh, Office 365. And indeed, the products, the quiz conform product. Uh, <coughs> that I'm going to de be demoing is built specifically for Office 365, but uh, Quizcom also has uh, a similar product that works on premises, uh, which does basically es essentially the, uh, the same thing. Uh, so especially if, like me, you're working for a big government uh, organization that is unable to go with Office 365 for all kinds of reasons, uh, 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 Se selling that client this solution and uh, showing them how much money they can save. Because right now my, uh, my client is paying me a lot of money to develop a form solution that solves all the problems that we're seeing here on the page. Um, uh, and if they could only buy the Quizcom solution and, and install it on their internal server, they would, uh, they would save hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, down the track. Now. So let's go through the, uh, the problem with out of box. No column level permissions. So basically when I create an out of box form, uh, let me show you an out of box form so, so that we're clear what we're talking about. I'm going to go to our, uh, uh, to a SharePoint uh, online Office 365 page. And we can, uh, we can see here, this is what a regular SharePoint list uh, uh, looks like. So I, I can see here, this is a travel register where a user can say, oh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, this is the person who's traveling, this is the start date, this is the return date, this is the travel from, this is the travel to. So uh, and, uh, at the bottom of the page, we can see, ah, have tickets been ordered? Has a hotel uh, been ordered? Has the itinerary been issued to traveling employees? Um, <coughs> what's the contact phone number uh, uh, for the travel team? And so on. So we can see already that uh, there's a, a slight problem here, where SharePoint basically forces us to put all the columns onto one page, without differentiation, without saying, "Wait a minute, 
tickets have been ordered, that's for a certain team, the, uh, the travel uh, the travel processing team, they're the ones who are ordering it. They are the ones who are going to say, yes, it's ordered or no, it's not ordered or the, the hotel is ordered, yes or no. It's not the person who's requesting the, uh, the travel. And SharePoint does not allow us to do that kind of uh, uh, differentiation within the form to say only certain people or certain roles um, uh, can, uh, can set different, uh, different column uh, values. Uh, to work around that, people have to use workflow engines, multiple lists to handle simple. It's a very simple requirement. We, we're saying the tickets have been ordered, the hotel ordered. We're saying these three fields should only be available to, uh, uh, to a certain team of people. And if you ask me to, uh, to, uh, to do that using only out of box, I'd say, okay, we need two separate lists. One list that has um, this, uh, uh, these columns, that uh, the columns for uh, for the um, uh, the columns that the requesting user uh, needs to uh, uh, to fill in, and then I'm going to create another list that has all those columns plus the extra columns, and I'm going to make a workflow to say every time someone makes a request, copy all that information to the second list and give different permissions, of course, on the different list so that uh, the other people will do. But then we get into uh, complexities. Uh, how does the person update their travel request and so on? So we can see it, it makes a very simple requirement be a big development job that requires a developer. We, uh, and that's a big frustration. Uh, SharePoint also has very simple validation. The validation rules in SharePoint, if you're not familiar with them, are very, very uh, simple. Uh, you can say empty or not empty, or you can put some kind of a Excel formula to do some uh, a bit more complex rules, but then uh, you're limited in the length. It's extremely hard to read if you're doing a lot of ifs with, uh, within. Uh, <coughs> it's, uh, uh, it's almost uh, impossible to maintain, uh, and it's very easy to, uh, to get wrong. Um, hard to use when lots of columns are used. Sorry. Uh, so this is uh, this is not very apparent here in, in this form, but even in this form you can see uh, we, uh, there are a lot of columns, and this is very noisy on the eyes. This is very uh, it, there's too much data on the screen. You need to scroll down to uh, uh, to see everything, and it's not very uh, user centric interface. Uh, and uh, how to create a many-to-many -to -many or one-to-many relationship. So if we do have a, a, a list, a se a several lists, and we, uh, we want to link them up, uh, the only way that we can do that in SharePoint is using a lookup column. And a lookup column is, uh, is very limited um, in, uh, in, in its interface and the usage of it. Uh, so, for example, if I have, if I had a, a, the concept of expenses, and I want to say uh, all of these expenses are related to this one uh, trip, uh, the only way I, I could do that is create a separate list of expenses. That's fine. SharePoint allows me to do that, and do a lookup from uh, uh, from the trip to the expenses. Uh, so that the user, when they are editing the trip, they need to select expenses, and that means I have to stop editing the trip. I need to go in another window, open the expenses table, and create all the expenses, and then go back here and link them up, um, and because otherwise, opening this page will never show me what expenses are related to it. And this is another uh, big frustration that comes up again and again and again. Um, and I, uh, as a developer who gives uh, solutions to, uh, to my clients, often <coughs> I find uh, that uh, I'm re uh, asked to resolve that. So let's see how QuizCon forms uh, help, us all, uh, help us with that. So these are the features of uh, QuizCon forms. We have dynamically, uh, uh, dynamically shown or hidden fields. Uh, uh, we, we get the option to group fields into groups or tabs. Uh, we have ca uh, cascading fields, so uh, we have the option to, to say uh, when changing one field, the values in the, uh, the available values in another field should, uh, should change uh, based on the selection. 
and multi-row forms. So something like the uh, the expenses that I was talking about, well, uh, you'll be able to do, um, uh, you'll be able to basically have an interface here that says add new expense, uh, which will ask you within uh, within this page, staying on this page, the, the expense details and, and, and then save it. Uh, and shows it to you when you open the, the travel form. So basically an enhanced lookup. <coughs> um, it, it also has dynamic field validations with uh, very complex uh, 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 field validation rules, including support for regular expressions, which allow you basically to validate anything. And there's a massive library. Uh, first of all, there's a, uh, there's a nice little library that comes with the uh, forms product itself. Uh, but you, there's massive amount of uh, uh, validation rules that you can download off the internet and, uh, and plug them in. For example, if you want to make uh, to make sure uh, something the user entered is a, uh, is a phone number or, or a valid email address and stuff like that, things that you uh, will be impossible to do using SharePoint validation are now available using QuizCon Forms. It fully supports custom fields. Uh, it also supports hiding and showing fields in views, so not not just here, uh, and not just in the in the list form itself, but also in the list views. So we we can uh, we can actually say uh, uh, for security purposes, let's not show a hotel ordered or approved by in a view that will then allow, allow users to edit using quick uh, quick edit and uh, things like that. And finally, and one of my favorites, custom actions, uh, where uh, we're able to add buttons uh, either to uh, the list, um, the, uh, the list form uh, page. So here we can add more buttons uh, or to the list view page, uh, we can add to the ribbon more buttons and we can define what those buttons do. And it can range for very simple buttons that again, power users can configure, like saying when this button is clicked, set the status to completed, uh, set the percentage to 100%, and um, and that's it. Uh, basically, it's a let's let's do two two quick edits in one click of a button, which is something very handy. Uh, but you can, uh, uh, if you have developers, you can do uh, uh, you can extend it in any way you want. You can basically uh, uh, use QuizConform to plug in the uh, the button, but then um, uh, tell the button run my code or run this start this workflow when I start and uh, uh, there's a lot more behind it. Now, sadly, we only have uh, uh, one hour for this presentation, out of which uh, 22 minutes have already passed. Uh, so I'm not going to have time to, uh, to go through all of this. Uh, so I'm going to concentrate on some, uh, some, uh, some of the most uh, um, uh, useful features uh, here, and also the ones that are easier, easiest to, to demonstrate. And if anyone has any more questions about any of the features that we're not seeing, uh, feel free to ping me, feel free to ping uh, Quizcom, and we'll help you with that. Uh, uh, and maybe we can arrange a private demo. Uh, definitely happy to do that. Uh, okay, so I'll, it's demo time. Guess what? It's, uh, it's demo time. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to create a travel request register. And I'm, I'm basically going to change the, uh, the form that we've already seen, the, that awkward form. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to do three uh, three things. I'm going to show different columns based on current user and based on the form status. I'm going to group fields together to make an easy to use form, and I'm going to use uh, custom validation to make sure data entered is correct. So that's the task, and that's the last uh, slide of PowerPoint that I'm going to show until the very uh, very end uh, question and answers time. Okay, so this is our form. As, as discussed, we have some things that shouldn't be displayed to the originating user. We have the approved by, um, as, which is uh, uh, who's the manager who approved it, and we have tickets have been ordered, hotel ordered, itinerary issued, and contact phone number. Uh, these are fields that need to be, uh, uh, to be shown to, uh, to the travel team, the travel processing team, not to the user who's requesting travel. <coughs> so to do this demo, I actually created uh, a, a group in the site called Travel Approving Managers, which you can see has Quizcom support, which is the current user I'm using now. And I've also created Travel Team, which includes Quizcom support and QA user too. 
So for now, we'll, uh, we'll leave it uh, like that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a rule on the request for, uh, for travel to say, hey, let's, uh, let's hide those, uh, those uh, fields, those four fields, based on who the current user is. So to do that, I go to the list tab, and I have, uh, this is, how do I move this? There we go. Um, we have the quiz conforms uh, icon there in the ribbon that I just clicked, which takes us to this, um, uh, to the quiz conforms uh, configuration page. And here we can choose, and you can see, uh, I hope you can see that uh, this is meant for, uh, for power users. Uh, every power user can say, okay, what form settings do I want to, uh, to do? First option is dynamic column permissions. Show, hide, disable fields based on dynamic conditions. That's exactly what, uh, uh, what you want to do. So I'll click on that button. And here we go. Uh, so now we, we choose which column we want to, uh, uh, to hide or, um, or show. So let's start with approved by, and we're gonna say new rule for approved by, and apply permission to and uh, we can do it for the new item form and the edit item form. And we can say, uh, hide it. And it's basically going to be hidden from anyone, from everyone. So I will temporarily, uh, this is also in my way, I will temporarily just apply this rule. Basically, the only thing I did now, I'm saying approved by, hide it in, in those two forms. So if I open... That's not what I meant to do. Oh, okay, too late. Okay. Uh, if I click on new item now, approved by that used to be here is no longer here. But that's not, uh, uh, that's not what I wanted. Now it's hidden from uh, at all times. Now I want to say show it, but only when the person is a member of, uh, of a specific group. And if you remember, I have the travel approving managers group. <coughs> we'll wait for the page to load, here we go. So you can see it already has a rule saying hide approved by in new form and edit form. I'm gonna say, let's edit that rule. Uh, and, sorry, I don't want to edit that rule. I'm, I want to create a new rule. My mouse is going crazy. So a new rule for the uh, for the uh, approved by. So basically, it selected approved by again, um, and I'm going to say apply perm uh, permission to those two forms, and I'm going to say show it, but under a specific condition, and the condition will be the current user. is in travel approving managers. So I, uh, so I say show it, but only if the current user is in travel approving managers group. I'll apply it. Okay, we can see here, there's a summary of the rules in plain English saying hide approved by in new form and edit form. Otherwise, show approved by in new form and edit form when current user is in Travel approving managers. So I'll go back to my form and I'll refresh. No. I think I may have gotten the order wrong. Just a second. I think I need to say, show it to travel approving managers, but uh, unless. Yeah, okay. So here's approved by being shown. Now that's because my current user is in travel approving managers. I will remove this user from travel approving managers.
What did I get wrong? No, I got something wrong. Current user is in travel approving managers. Uh, show approved by when continue, otherwise hide approved by. Yeah. New and edit. Could it be that it's taking a time? Oh, something weird is happening here. I hope I'm, uh, because I'm on a developer instance of, uh, of the forms, I hope I'm not running into something that a, a developer is now doing something uh, to, to it. Let me, let me just quickly start again. New rule. I'll, del I'll delete the rule. Approved by, new, and edit, and I'm gonna so say hide it. And I'm gonna check that that worked. Okay, that worked. And then I'm gonna say new rule, new, and edit. I'm gonna say show it. Current user in travel moving managers. But I'm pretty sure that needs to be uh, first. I can't, my mouse is still. Let me try to apply it, maybe that will release my mouse. Just to make sure. Okay, so it definitely hit it, which it should. The question is showing it as I expected. Does it let me <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm I'm seem to have uh, to be having some small issues with my mouse which insists on uh, on Selecting stuff instead of dragging stuff. I'm not quite sure what the problem is. I'm going. I, I'm going to con uh, to continue, and uh, I'm hoping that I'll uh, that this will sort itself out in a bit. Uh, so I'm going to continue by by showing you this uh, this one. So it's a similar process. So hotel ordered. I'm going to say hotel ordered uh, in new item and edit item. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show it. Um, to people who are in travel team and come on and I'm gonna uh, gonna hide it from uh, anyone else gonna click apply And so hotel ordered okay, hotel ordered is visible. And now I'm gonna remove myself from travel team. This is very weird. Did this apply? Show hotel when uh, uh, otherwise hide hotel ordered. Yeah, that's 
Let's see if uh, maybe uh, maybe save is required and apply didn't uh, didn't actually apply it. Ah, yes, that one. Huh. I guess I needed uh, to save. So now you you see, uh, hotel ordered uh, disappeared because I'm not a member of travel team. If I become a member of the travel team again. There's definitely a problem on this uh, on this instance of quiz conforms. I guess uh, you'll have to uh, to take my uh, word for it, or or don't take my word for it. And, and there is a video of this of me doing this uh, available on YouTube uh, that I, I, I can se uh, send to you later. But uh, this should definitely have worked. Um, I guess uh, uh, I guess as I said, I'm working on a, uh, on a dev instance here. But this is how easy it is to uh, to say uh, hide or show based on uh, uh, on s uh, certain rules and conditions that uh, uh, that you can add. Um, let me see if I can say uh, hide it if the current user is not in travel. Uh, this is for approved by travel approving managers. And then I don't need this, and that's a much simpler rule. And I'll edit this one as well to say uh, hide it if the user is not in travel team. Okay, I'm betting this will work. Okay, hotel audit came back, approved by came back. Let's quickly do the, uh, the approved by. I'll remove the user. And, and now approved by. Still showing, is it cached? Maybe, let me make sure I refresh properly. No, it still insists on on showing me that I have no idea what's uh, what's going on. I'll uh, I'll check if it's a if there's a, a problem there in the in my logic. Uh, in any case, I'm uh, moving uh, moving on. Uh, the next thing I wanted to uh, to show you here, um, uh, yeah, appro approved by when current users not travel travel approving manager. Ah, did I do it? No, travel approving managers. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to uh, to show you is some uh, some logical, uh, uh, more logical uh, things and dynamic uh, uh, dynamic changes. So you see here that I have a question of do you have any special culinary requirements? And the next question is, what are the culinary requ requirements? Now, obviously, this question should not be dis uh, uh, displayed unless the user said they have a, a culinary requirements. The way to do that using dynamic uh, column permissions is to say, okay, I want the culinary requirements column. I want to say that on new and edit form, hide it on the condition that do you have any culinary requirements is equal to no. So if the user said that uh, it's, uh, it's no, they don't have culinary requirements, hide it. Otherwise, show it. So I'm going to save it. <coughs> so you see here, by default, I don't have that big box of culinary requirements. If I click, I have culinary requirements. We get shown the, uh, what are the culinary requirements. If I untick it and tick it uh, and so on. So that's a very handy way to, uh, to make your forms more user-friendly by minimizing uh, what you show to the user 
if the question that you ask and uh, you're asking doesn't need to be asked based on the current state of the form. Uh, and uh, that, that's also a good demo of uh, uh, how dynamic it is. Um, by the way, I'm noticing that we're not seeing approved by, so I think it is working. It's just that uh, there's some cache where uh, SharePoint kept telling, uh, uh, telling the form that I am a member of Tyvel Approving Managers, and now suddenly uh, it picked up, no, I was removed from Tyvel Approving Managers. So all that was needed is some patience, and you can see that the product works. So, uh, okay, so that was the first thing I wanted to show you, different columns based on current user and form status. So that was easy. Let's do the group fields together to make an easy form to use. That's one of my uh, favorite things to, uh, to de uh, demonstrate. Um, I'm going back to QuizCom form settings. And basically what I'm saying is that there's a lot of information here and some of it uh, matters to the employee, some of it matters to the travel team, some, some of it matters to the approving manager. Uh, what I want to do, I want to create field groups or tabs. And that makes the form much, more, uh, much easier to work with and much easier for the users to focus on what they want to, uh, to work on. So I'm going to create some, uh, some tabs. Right now, I don't have any tabs, so I'm going to uh, create uh, uh, some tabs. But notice some, uh, uh, some general settings that, uh, that I have um, uh, that can be very, uh, 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 very useful to do. For example, field caption location above the field. That's one of my favorites, and actually I'm doing that in every form that I develop uh, myself uh, that's a custom form. Basically, notice now that it has title and then a box title, travel employee, box for travel employee, and so on. If I reload the page, now I have title above the box for title, travel employees above, and, and we also made the headers bold. So that's already an easier to read form than the default out of box SharePoint one. So that's just an, a, a nice uh, quick way. You can also edit the uh, field aliases so if you want to give them different uh, display names and uh, to say, ah, oh, let's, let's make use of uh, the wide screens that we have at work by saying default uh, number of fields per row, let's make it two. So now we're going to have two fields per row. You can see here title, traveling employees, and, uh, and so on. So uh, there are some nice things uh, you can do before even creating groups. But to create groups, it's very easy. So um, uh, requesting data, well, let's make it request data. Uh, number of columns per row, let's ma uh, make it uh, two. And uh, so you see here, because we selected two, it, uh, it already creates a mock-up of the form saying you're going to have two columns. I can uh, make three and then we'll have three columns. Let's keep it at two, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be good. Um, <coughs> and now I can decide which, uh, 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 which field will be where. So I'll add here the title and I'll add here the uh, requesting employee, uh, if I can find it, uh, traveling employees. And in, in here, I'm gonna say, uh, you know what? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep this one uh, empty still. I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna create another row here to, uh, to say uh, travel from, and this one will be destination. So you can see some, uh, on some columns, I'm, uh, uh, on some rows, I'm saying that uh, I, I'm gonna have only one um, uh, delete. Uh, only one uh, field on some rows I'm going to have uh, two fields so travel from destination and then I'm going to have the dates uh, start date and return date so I'm making the form much more usable for, uh, for the end user to uh, put some da uh, data entry into do you have any spe uh, special culinary requirements? And then what are the culinary requ requirements? So uh, at this point, I, I'll pause this and I, I'll apply to show you wh what the result is. And you'll see that from this mess of a form, I 
I created one tab with a very handy form where the user can, uh, uh, can select I'm traveling from uh, this place to this place. And uh, this is started, this is the return date. It already makes a lot more sense than, uh, than it did before. But I'm not done. At this point, I'm going to create a new group. So that was my request data group. And now I can create a, another group. And that's, uh, and, and my group is, and uh, my second group is approval. And in approval, I'm going to say there's only one field, which is approving man approved by. I can also put conditions to say, show this, uh, uh, show this, only if the user is in travel approving managers. But I'm, I'm not going to do it now uh, because we're running out of time. So if I refresh, and refresh, pick up, and it's still cached. Come on, I didn't put any conditions. No, still stuck. Let's make sure I saved it. No. Let me make sure it's not cached. Uh, hide group if all fields are invisible to user. Okay, that's actually a, a clever thing. Uh, because we have the group for uh, approval uh, that only has one column, even though I didn't put a condition on the group, it, uh, it applied that condition because I'm not a member of team approving managers and there's nothing for me to see in that group. So hoisted by Mount Patard. And I'm going to fix it by adding myself as a manager. Now, as we know, that may take SharePoint a while to register. So we're going to uh, we're going to come back to it, and I'm sure when, uh, it will pick it up uh, eventually. I'm going to create a third group for travel te uh, team, and the travel team. And uh, we'll have, <coughs> let's say, uh, three side by side just to make it fun. Hotel ordered, uh, itinerary issued, and uh, what else was it for the travel team? And tickets that have been ordered. So I'm going to put them all in one line and I'm going to save. Okay, and now we see the, the form with the three columns. I told you this will come back, just a matter of cache. And here's the travel team form. So you can see how I made a form uh, a lot more usable, a lot, a lot more user-friendly, a lot easier to find. You, we also accidentally stumbled across uh, how nice and smart it is to say if a tab doesn't have anything in it, just don't display the tab. And it does that automatically for you. And <coughs> We see how it integrates with the other rules of whether or not uh, uh, things are displayed. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is some great uh, great features, and I've done all of that in uh, in the last fifteen minutes. Ooh, well, that did not mean to close the this one. Uh, use custom validation to make sure that uh, data entered is correct is my last demo, which uh, we'll do in the next five minutes before opening up to questions and answers. Uh, so once again, I'm going to go, I'm going to remind you how to get in. This is in the ribbon next to list settings. You have the uh, quiz conforms uh, uh, button. So if I click on quiz conform buttons. And we can see here that uh, I have field constraints. Field constraints allows me to uh, to do <coughs> advanced <coughs> sorry 
advanced validation on the fields. So you can see here, I, uh, I can do, uh, we have the phone number, uh, uh, which I should have added to one of the tabs, so I'll have to remember to do that because otherwise we can't test this. And I'm gonna do a rule on the contact phone number. And the rule can be, ah, it needs to equal a value or it, uh, uh, otherwise show an error message, or it, uh, it mustn't equal a value, otherwise uh, show an error message. For example, if someone types test, uh, uh, contact phone number must not equal test, or I can uh, write uh, that this is not a testing system. Do your testing elsewhere. So you can see that I can actually customize the error message that uh, uh, that will be displayed to the user. I can say even highlight uh, highlight the field. So let's let's keep that. That that's actually uh, nice. Now um, and I can do also only on the condition that the user is not a manager and uh, and so on. And by now you should know how the conditions work. Uh, I've uh, shown them enough. But I also want to show you. <coughs> so we have the. <coughs> Usual contains begin with greater, less than, equal than, uh, length is less, does not contain. Uh, so a lot of validation options, but the most powerful validation option is of course matches pattern. And you can see here that we have some patterns that uh, Quizcom gives us out of box, like it must match a date format, or must match a decimal number, must match a file name, for example, or an email address. Um, for, uh, must match uh, a phone number, which is what, uh, what we want. So you can see that there's a lot of options here. There's also patterns list where you can build your own patterns, which uh, you just go to Google and, and say, hey, give me a regular expression for a pattern for an Australian uh, postcode instead of a, uh, American or Canadian or whatever it is. Um, so I say, yeah, it needs to match the pattern of phone number. And I say contact phone number must match the following pattern, phone number. Okay. Or I can say a better error message, contact phone number must be a valid uh, phone number. And I can even put 555555 as an example to the user. And I'm going to say highlight the field. So I'm going to save it now, even though that's, uh, uh, it's not necessarily what we want. We have two rules that compete with each other, but I want to, you to see what happens and then I'll, I'll fix it. Oops, something went wrong. Uh, what went wrong? Because uh, you need, to, yeah, that was, I think a developer is now messing around with our, div with our demo environment. Should tell them off. Okay. We're back here. Uh, I'll just jump into tabs to make sure the phone number is in one of the tabs because I think I hid it from all the tabs. And let's put it in uh, travel uh, in travel team. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say I want a new row. I'm going to select this uh, uh, this and say. Um, that it has contact phone number and it spans the three rows. Uh, so it will be by itself safe. <coughs> and we're going back to our list. And in our last two minutes, we're gonna see the two validations that I did and new item. And in travel team, I'm putting a, a phone number test and it should tell me this is not a testing system. So you, you can see we have the error in two places. One is above, because we have tabs, it actually highlights which tab contains the error because we may have tried to, uh, uh, to save when we were on a different tab. And you can see when that happens, it goes to a different tab. And here it says a summary of all the errors on, uh, on the form not just the, the one in this tab. Uh, if, I, uh, if I try 555555, which is an invalid phone number, it says, no, it has to be uh, all the way through a valid phone number. 
And now we're getting other areas like the title and, and traveling place, all the built-in SharePoint ones, which you can see uh, the Quizcom solution also highlights for you and says you can't leave this blank. If you click on it, it, it actually goes to where the, uh, uh, the tab where the, uh, the form is. Uh, so that concludes basically what I wanted to show you today. Um, uh, we're just in time to have uh, five minutes of uh, uh, question and answers. Uh, if you want and uh, if you're able, I'm not sure how uh, how this works. Uh, if you're able to unmute your microphone and uh, and say something, or otherwise, I'm uh, on on the chat. I'll look through the chat for uh, for questions and answers. I'll turn the question and answer on, um, and I'll read your questions. And I hope to be able to answer them. Uh, so first question is from Leroy Lim uh, for the uh, option default number of fields per row. Is it uh, responsive? Uh, uh, the answer from the top of my head, yes, but because it's such a good question, let's go and test it. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how, uh, how responsive it is. Uh, wh where did I have a, a multiple per row? I guess this one will do uh, if I try to. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, so it's responsive up to a point, but no, they, uh, I, see, I see here that they, they don't collide, uh, uh, they don't collapse under each other when the screen is too, uh, too small. There's a, uh, it's, so I would say it's just as responsive as regular SharePoint lists. There's no added responsiveness uh, here. Uh, the second question again from Leroy is, uh, for groups with multiple columns, is the form responsive? Well, I think uh, we uh, we just answered that, uh, but thanks, Leo, for uh, for those questions. Uh, does anyone else uh, have any questions? Please open uh, the Q and A um, tab. I'm not sure how that looks on your end, and type in a question or type in a question in, uh, in the chat window, and uh, and I'll be happy to uh, to answer your questions. I'm seeing, okay, since there are no more questions coming in, I will uh, thank you all. Thank you for, for joining me and not making me uh, do all of this without uh, an audience. Uh, if you want to know more, please go to uh, quizcom.com, www.quizcom.com, uh, or email sales at quizcom.com. They'll be happy to, uh, to help you. You can also find them on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and there's a YouTube channel. Yeah, so if you search Quizcom on YouTube, you'll find a lot of training videos, including me building a solution, the travel request uh, uh, solution, step, uh, step by step and with a lot more detail a lot more detail and there are short videos that focus on uh, you can actually choose which what do you want to uh, to know so if uh, so if i skip something and you think ah oh, but that feature i would have wanted to know about that feature trust me there's a video there that uh, with me showing uh, showing that feature um, uh, and about the question about the recording for this session i'm not sure how or if it will be made available but I did record it and I'm going to supply it to the sales team at Quizcom. So I suggest you email sales at quizcom.com and ask for a recording of this session. Um, but otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise you can find uh, on YouTube a much more comprehensive uh, recording of, uh, of this already. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, your time. I definitely enjoyed uh, uh, doing this. Uh, until next time, goodbye and thank you.